we are also bridging some big gaps when it comes to incident response. I know you are not offering a full incident response solution, but how does Intelligence Cloud enable better visibility and integration with existing tools? Um, well, so the point is, two answers to this. First one is we don't do full on uh, like uh, security analytics right now yet, right? There's something that we're looking at, uh, of course, but it's got to be driven by, you know, sort of customer need and demand as well. So we've we've already seen um, a lot of interest in this, largely because by, by um, orientating what's actually used against known CVEs, we can improve posture almost immediately. And, and it's finding the needle in the haystack that we're very good at doing. And it's at a very granular level in the Java environment. So and another good aspect to, to, to focus on, on, on in that scenario is the fact that we analyze what codes actually in use, not in use, what's dead or unused. So many people are, are believe that they have to protect vulnerable code, but that code's never used. So just get rid of it. It's a liability. So you can just remove and reduce some of your security liability as well as better patching strategy. But in this, in the case where we've got maybe incident or there's more broader security operations, we provide an interface so that you can actually take the telemetry from Intelligence Cloud and you can push it into another product um, using a REST API. So that allows us to basically, much like you would do with any other security products, is bring that intelligence together within a single analytics environment if you choose to. So that's available today. It's part of Intelligence Cloud, uh, both our partners and, and customers that have more uh, specific solutions in their security operations center can, can actually leverage it that way. As you rightly pointed out, even dead or unused code can be vulnerability. How does code inventory help organizations identify and eliminate the risk? And what kind of real world impact have you seen on developer productivity and modernization efforts? Okay, so um, I'll try and relate this back to the overall subject, which is the managed service piece of this. So. You, you know, in all the scenarios that we've been talking about, whether it's um, code debt and, and, and the ability to understand what code is in use, what the licensing obligations that you need to face in terms of um, support or, or the security aspects that relate to your Java code, all of these require resource to interpret the data, right? So that's the real managed service opportunity that customers don't necessarily want to skill up additional resources to interpret that. So a good example, as you just mentioned, is something we call code inventory, which is it's an, an additional type of collection that we do on top of licensing data. So as well as just saying, okay, what JVMs are being used, what Java applications are loading, we collect obviously the structure of those Java applications as well. So what, what components of that Java application? So that's the things like classes and libraries, what are being loaded and, and or rather what isn't being used as well. So the value in that sense is you know, if you have a development team that's doing code maintenance, and, and I've, on average, code maintenance can be anywhere from 16 to about 30% of all of DevOps time. If, if they're contracting with an external partner to say, can you advise us on what we can do better and drive greater efficiencies? One of their challenges is it's a manu very manual effort to do that. Using Intelligence Cloud, they can go in and they can analyze what code's dead, what's, what's not used, what's not loaded, what's got security vulnerability. And if you if it can be eliminated or it can be very effectively um, improved, you can drive efficiency very quickly. And a good example, we just literally uh, as all had a, a very big customer of ours that just invest in intelligence cloud that had over a thousand developers. And we identified that they were wasting time almost to the tune of about 30 developers a year's worth of time maintaining code that would never be used ever. They, they, over the last 10 years, it hadn't been used at all. It had security vulnerability. It wasn't being used. So just by eliminating aspects of that and continually building intelligence cloud into their development cycle, um, it, it created a, a large degree of efficiency. Now, that's a very specific use case that for managed service partners, they would have to be develop or delivering sort of code maintenance services to their customers to really end, to drive that level of, of, of efficiency. Um, above and beyond the development teams that those customers are using themselves. In the other two scenarios around things like license management and security, it's sort of a no-brainer. I mean, most of the time, organizations aren't skilled up to do that themselves, so they rely on partner communities, managed services to offer that advice. 